Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rhiannon. Here are my five tips to bring magic into your everyday life. Tip number one is kitchen witchcraft. Now, this is one thing that I have borrowed from my own practice to offer as a suggestion for you guys. Kitchen witchcraft is an amazing way that you can use in your everyday life. You have to eat every single day, you have to drink every single day, so why not bless your drinks that you are having? Why not make your morning coffee a spell in itself? I think I've shared this once before. Um, actually, one of my good friends does a spell and I borrowed this from her where she takes her morning coffee and uses cinnamon and the coffee correspondences and the creamer correspondences, a little bit of vanilla, all of that, um, whatever you want to put in your morning coffee, a little bit of nutmeg, and she uses that as an energy booster and a way to bring positivity into her life. It's an amazing way to really get yourself going in the morning. So why not start with your morning cup of coffee? Most people drink coffee in the morning anyway. And it's a powerful correspondence. I don't know why people don't use it more often. Coffee is used in a lot of domination powders and a lot of domination spells. So why not use it in your morning cup of coffee and get like a two for one, you know? Also, I really love to use specific herbs depending on what the recipe is and put it into my food and into my cooking. So if you're doing something a little bit more for sleepy time or relaxation, maybe like a lavender scone with like lavender syrup on top of it. That'd be a really nice treat to have a few hours before bed and um, you can really bake the intention and your will into a beautiful treat that you can share with your family and your friends and you can enjoy yourself and internalize. Tip number two is cleaning. Cleaning is one of my more favorite ways to connect with the energy of my home and in what I'm doing. If you don't have a clean space, you're not going to be able to bring in flowing energies as easily. So doing a cleansing ritual every day, whether that be sweeping your floors. Sweeping your floors is actually one of the more popular ways of cleansing energy, um, energetically, not just physically in the witch community where you use your besom and you sweep out the energy. You don't actually use your broom on the floor, you sweep it above the ground and move out the energy. Um, but also just sweeping your floor every day um, physically, you can do a floor wash. Um, if you'd like, I can do a video all on my recipe for my floor wash and some cleaning spiritual recipes that I use with that. So let me know if you'd like a video on that and I could definitely do that. Just put it down in the comments below and I can get that started for you guys. You can do cleansing sprays. Um, it's a good way to kind of lighten up energy. And scent is a huge thing for me too, is lighting an incense or an offering once a day as well. Number three that I've not really seen very often, I've only seen one other witch online do this, at least say to her community that she does this, is to you do your spell work and your manifesting through your decorating and your decor in your home. Why not do that? Your home is an empty canvas and it's also an energetic space for yourself. Use your space as a way to connect to your manifestation. For example, um, this one witch uses her entranceway as an altar space, metaphorical, sorry, <laughs> altar space. It's not really set up as an altar, but she has things that channel to her abundance, greens and golds and rich warm tones, the type of energy she wants to bring into her space. In her living room, she does the same thing. She has an altar set up based on an, an area of focus for hearth and home. So literally on her hearth of her fireplace is an altar that brings people together, brings good communication, and brings happy, fun energy to the conversation. Um, we are currently slowly trying to do that in my home. So down in my living room, it was this gross brown and it kind of just felt muted all the time. And we decided to spice things up and we got this beautiful burnt bright orange kind of color going on. It's not stark for any means, but it's this bright 
burnt orange. It's warm, it's creative, and it's energetic, lively, and it's a good energy for the living room, especially because we want to watch less TV and have more interactions with our family. And that's something I suggest you guys try doing for your own spaces. Number four is one of my more favorite ways to go about bringing magic into your everyday life. So number four is glamour magic and that is something you can do in many different ways but for myself I choose a few pieces in my makeup that is more of a special occasion or for a specific feeling and I bless that and charge it with the energy of what I would like. Just purchase it just specifically for that intent and I use it for that intent every time and I don't usually use it for any other reason. And I'll actually burn a candle down, I'll anoint it with oil, I'll do a whole ritual with it and put my intention into the item. And then every time I use it and I wear it, I'm thinking of that intention and I'm activating it within myself. So for like today, I have these new lashes on and I'm a little bit glowy and um, I also have my bee necklace on. This is something that my partner gave me and this is charmed as well. So you can do it with nail polish or color correspondence. You can do it with really whatever you want. I like to do it with my makeup. Um, whenever I wear a lot of highlight, uh, it's usually geared towards feeling like I want to be seen, like I want people to pay attention and focus on what I'm saying because it's of great importance to me. I've seen, I think, Bahati Life charms her lipstick as well. Um, so when she wants to like have neck snapping attention towards her, she like wears this red gloss lipstick that's um, super beautiful by the way. And lastly, number five is creating a daily practice. Now I'll go into this a little bit more in another video, but having a daily practice is super important and I'll tell you guys why. It doesn't have to be elaborate or massive in any way, but having an everyday practice is gonna help you cement yourself into a routine, especially if you're newer into witchcraft or paganism, is gonna allow you to build a habit and it takes at least 21 days to build a habit and this is something that really helps you to cement that. It also helps you to build skills quicker as well. And if you pick one or two things to do with your daily ritual, then it really helps you to get into ritual easier and to connect with it quicker and easier. By doing it more, you're able to do it better and more often and you're able to connect with it. So for example, one of my new daily practices, which has changed a little bit, is now I used to meditate every day for at least five, 10 minutes, and then that fell off for a while and I was sore a lot, but then I realized that I was missing a foundational part of my meditations, and that was yoga. I always felt amazing after yoga and it's an amazing workout and it's an amazing spiritual practice but I wasn't using them in tandem with each other and I came across a yogi and he teaches about yoga and spiritualism and all of that stuff. The more I listen to his viewpoint, it makes total sense. Everything they do with yoga helps to prepare them for their meditation, which then helps them prepare better for a spiritual practice no matter what it is and a lot of people say in the witchcraft community that meditation is one of the major things that you need to really have a strong practice and I'm definitely a proponent to believing in that that's something I definitely subscribe to is that meditation is a huge thing and if you struggle with meditation there are many different ways to meditate and i'll probably do another video on that later on for me it helped me sit longer and stronger and my legs wouldn't fall asleep and i felt more connected to my body when i did yoga for five minutes before and then i did my five minute meditation or i did yoga for 10 minutes and then a 10 minute meditation and i slowly built myself up that way so five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes of each and then over time I built my stamina so for like a week I would do five minutes and then for another week I did 10 minutes and then 15 the next and eventually you'll be able to build yourself up to an hour or more however long you'd like to 
be able to practice for. So that is a huge thing. And it, you don't have to do it for just yoga or meditation, but for me, that was a huge thing. So this is something that I'm restarting for myself, and that's going to be my daily practice every single morning. And then if I have time, I would like to do another daily tarot poll. So I started that when I first started witchcraft and divination when I was trying to learn tarot um, but then I put tarot down for a while and I kind of miss it so I want to revisit it again and then do a daily pull in the morning and then maybe do some journaling every morning for you it could be maybe leaving an offering on your altar or you could light an incense and um, give thanks to your guides and guardians and maybe your ancestors you could talk to your ancestors, you can pull some cards, you could do a daily devotional if you'd like. Whatever you would like to do, you can kind of just pick something simple and do it every single day. But the thing is, is you want to make it simple enough that you can dedicate to doing this every single day, even if you're sick, even if you don't feel like doing it, if you're not in the mood. It's something that you want to do every single day. It's a daily practice, something that you dedicate to yourself spiritually that you would not miss. And this is going to help you build your practice quicker, and it's going to help you connect to the divine every single day in a small way. And even if that means um, going outside and meditating with your feet bare in the grass for five minutes a day and talking to spirit, or if that's even like a full-on lesser banishing ritual or something like that or a full-on cleansing whatever you want you can make it as massive or as small as you would like so those are my five tips for bringing real magic into your everyday life i hope those are helpful and you found use of some of them let me know if you decide to try any of those out in the comments down below i would love to know and i will see you guys in my next video stay wicked